okay so one by one we will be talking about the houses and uh, this is going to help you in your exams and uh, in understanding english literature more so let's go ahead this family the, the house of wessex this family or house supplied most of the kings of england between 1800 and uh, 1066 first of the line alfred and the great successfully defended against viking conquest ethelred and unready so you can remember the names you can write down the younger brother of edward and martia lost crown to the danes edward the confessor last of the line began construction of the westminster abbey so you can uh, remember two three facts here The first was Edward, and the last was Edward the Confessor. And uh, Westminster Abbey was, uh, you know, the begin construction of West Westminster of Abbey, and uh, later torn down and rebuilt by Henry VIII. So you remember from this PPT, rebuilt by Henry VIII, and it was started by Edward the Confessor. House of uh, Denmark. Sven Fortbeard first of the Danish kings to defeat English and take take crown crown returned to Athelred and was six from upon his death in 1014 Senate and the great Fortbeard son defeats Athelred son Edmund Ironside to retake crown Harold Harefoot known for his speed in battle possibly poisoned on throne by hars harskut herod's half brother and last of the line died under mysterious circumstances a common fatal malady for kings the sex line restored with admon the cousin fesser next is house of normandy probably you have uh, heard this name house of uh, normandy william first William the Conqueror defeated King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. So I hope you remember this name. Battle of Hastings ordered Domesday Book, comprehensive survey of English landholders and taxable property. Henry I. So then comes Henry I. You can see here. After William I, there was Henry I. He did much to unite Norman and English population, including marrying a granddaughter of Edmund Ironside. Loss of his son in shipwreck put succession in jeopardy. Named his daughter Empress Matilda to succeed, but upon his death, his nephew Stephen of Blois seized the throne, leading to the anarchy. In between 1835, from uh, 1835 to A, sorry uh, 1135 to 1153 next is the anarchy the period of anarchy there was no, no rule that time can be considered the first english civil war so this period okay and this anarchy is called first english civil war so you can remember this one you can make your notes with the video mostly a series of uh, sieges led by Barons loyal is a either to impress Matilda or Stephen of Blois. London declared Stephen rightful king. So Stephen was rightful king according to London, and his interest controlled most territory for significant period of conflict. In 1145, Henry Fitzjam Press, son of Empress Matilda, leads a small army to several victories over Stephen along. stalemate ensues when his own son eustace dies after several unsuccessful attempts to name him official successor stephen enters into peace negotiation and with the treaty of when so you can remember this name uh, treaty of winchester declares henry the successor okay and henry becomes the successor house of plantagenet In this, we have Henry II, Richard I, John, 
and uh, last one is Edward III. So Henry II, English common law system, courts, and judges were precedent established established this. And Richard I, Richards, Richard the Lionheart, the Lionheart it is called Richard, a great warrior who put down multiple rebellions against his father. Truth to truth be told, he spent more time on quest and holy pilgrims, pilgrimages than in England. Then third one is John, the opposite of his older brother Richard. John was a weak king, so you remember Richard was strongest person, and uh, that's that's why he is called the loyal hearted. And John, the opposite of his older brother Richard, John was a weak king, unpopular, wars, high taxes, and illegal behavior led feudal barons to force his signing of the Magna Carta in 1215, placing limitation upon the king's power and the next one is edward iii another military genius established england as a significant military power in its time additionally the house of lords and house of commons were established in parliament during his reign so you can remember house of lords and house of commons were established in parliament during his reign house of lancaster you know war of roses so you you must remember this house of lancaster henry 4th and henry 5th and henry 6th they served throne from the cousin richard ii okay and named chaucer court poet he was uh, okay chaucer was court poet and who named it henry 4th and was buried in canterbury cathedral henry 5th Waged successfully war on France, nearly conquered the whole country. Subject to subject of three Shakespearean plays, so you must remember this from Shakespeare plays. Henry Fourth, sorry, Henry Sixth, more suited to monastic duties than politics, he ultimately lost the throne to the House of York, Yorkshire. War of Roses. Let's talk about this. This was a struggle for power between the two rival uh, Plantagenet heirs, the House of Lancaster Red Roses and uh, the House of York. So that's why this struggle is called the War of Roses. Okay. Henry VI was but an infant when his father died. Richard, Duke of York, was like Henry. a first descendant of edward iii and claimed title by right of uh, primo genitor descendant of the third son of edward versus fourth son and a direct descendant of edward mortimer so important is to remember these two we must remember this okay and they are symbols red rose and white white rose and if you forget sometimes so let me give you a shortcut when we write down lancaster so final one is r so it becomes red so the symbol of lancaster was red okay in this way you can remember york then remaining is house of york which has the symbol white rose after richard's death in battle his son edward continued the fight and defeated henry 6 to take the crown uh, crown as edward 4th in 1461 henry 6 was briefly restored to throne when edward's edward's advisers plotted against him in uh, 1470 within the year edward returned with an army at the ensuing battle of uh, twexbury in the george son The Prince of Wales was killed, and George died of natural cause on the night Edward re-entered land, London. Then House of York. Let's talk about little bit House of York. House of York. The first one was Edward IV, then Edward V, and Richard III. Ultimately victorious in the war. So you remember this one. So York was, you know, winner. House of York. 
effectively eliminated the House of Lancaster supporters to save Henry Tudor, who escaped into exile, a concealed country under successful second rule. Edward V, 13-year-old son of son of king, was placed into Tower of London with his younger brother for their protection by their uncle Richard, died under mysterious circumstances. Richard III, brother of Edward IV, he died at the hands of Henry Tudor at the Battle of Bosworth Field, ending both the reign of the House of York and the War of Roses. Uh, War of the Roses and portrayed as crippled manipulative villain in Shakespeare's play. So Richard third one. So it, such kind of questions are asked in uh, you know UGC Net too. But who is portrayed as crippled manipulative villain in Shakespeare plays? Okay, so ultimately victorious was Edward Force. All right, House of York. So I hope this will help you to remember the kings and queens in England and it will help you to understand uh, the Shakespeare's plays uh, in a better way. Goodbye, take care, see you in next video.